Deputy First Minister, Your Majesty. Oh, good evening. Hello. Are you well? Thank you very much. I'm, I'm still alive. Anyway. Nice to see you again. Martin McGuinness meeting the Queen earlier this year. Still a strange sight to behold given his background as leader of the IRA, the Irish Republican Army. Absolutely. On Tuesday, Sinn Féin, McGuinness's party, announced on Twitter that the 66-year-old had died after a short illness. Martin McGuinness was born in Londonderry in 1950. He joined the provisional IRA after dropping out of high school and working as an apprentice butcher in the late 1960s. At the time, the Catholic civil rights movement faced increasing conflict with the province's government and police, who were Protestant. By the age of 21, McGuinness had become Londonderry's deputy IRA commander. And as bombs systematically wrecked the city centre, he insisted that Northern Ireland must be forced out of the UK against the wishes of Protestants. In 1972, which was Northern Ireland's bloodiest year, McGuinness was part of a six-man IRA delegation flown by the British government to London for secret face-to-face -face negotiations during a brief truce. The talks got nowhere, and McGuinness went back on the run until his arrest on New Year's Eve in the Republic of Ireland As he left the court, so near a car loaded with 250 pounds of explosives and nearly 5,000 rounds of ammunition. McGuinness, still disguised with dyed hair and a recently grown moustache, and McCullion were driven off to the Mountjoy prison to shouts of, up the provost from their supporters. Bloodshed continued throughout the 1980s, and even after Sinn Féin, the political wing of the IRA, started to run for elections, McGuinness insisted that the armed struggle remained essential. I can tell you that the meeting was very constructive. Northern Ireland's first power-sharing government, formed in 1999, was led by moderates and afforded only minor roles for both Sinn Féin I think it is going to be difficult. and Ian Paisley's Democratic Unionists, a Protestant party. This is not a daybreak. That first coalition collapsed under the weight of Paisley's uncompromising approach and the IRA's refusal to disarm, as the US-brokered Good Friday Pact of 1998 intended. But after election results vaulted the Democratic Unionists and Sinn Féin to the top of their communities for the first time, pressure mounted on the IRA to surrender its arsenal of weapons, which happened in 2005. No observer could have foreseen what happened next, a genuine friendship between First Minister Paisley and Deputy First Minister McGuinness. On the 8th of May 2007, McGuinness attended Stormont for the swearing-in of the power-sharing government in Northern Ireland. I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act of 1998. British Prime Minister Theresa May on Tuesday said that she could never condone the path he took in the earlier part of his life, but that Martin McGuinness ultimately played a defining role in leading the Republican movement away from violence, and that in doing so he made an essential and historic contribution to the extraordinary journey of Northern Ireland from conflict to peace.